our everyday world. There goes Robbie getting ready for his first serve. He throws the ball into the air and freeze! This is a great shot by Susie. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at the scene. See how the sunlight is coming from the left side of the ball? Okay, let's get rid of the background and examine this closer. The available light from the sun creates three specific areas on the ball. The side the sun is hitting directly is bright and could be easily overexposed. This is the bright surface area. The area on the ball where the sunlight is not hitting creates a darker shadow surface. In between the dark and light areas is a magic spot for identifying exposure. So there we have it, three areas of light on a round or 3D surface that can be examined by the naked eye. These areas are bright, middle, dark. Technically, the middle shadow area is where your camera, if on auto, should be setting an exposure reading. Let's take a look at this effect again, but this time from the right side. Robbie hits it over the line. Bill, trying to get ahead, serves, freeze! Once again, we have a great shot from Susie and her new camera. Susie was able to freeze the ball in motion because of her high shutter speed of one thousandth of a second. Faster shutter speeds allow for the camera to capture fast action within scenes. Let's zoom in and take a look at the sunlight again. What we are looking for is the visible middle shadow surface area. Once again, this is the area between the bright side and the dark side of the object. This is the magic exposure area from which to choose your best exposure. If your camera is on auto, then most likely this was the area in which the exposure rating was determined. If you are choosing the exposure manually, then point your lens at the largest area of the magic exposure area, take the readings using your camera's meter, and then set the camera to match those f-stop and shutter speed settings accordingly. Bill hits the ball into the net. He runs up, picks up the ball, throws it high over the net, freeze! Here we have the perfect example of a silhouette caused by the available sunlight in the shot. The sun is behind the ball and glaring directly into the camera lens. This puts the darker shadow area on the side of the ball closest to the camera. With the sun behind the ball, an eclipse effect takes place on the object. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. If we take a closer look at the ball, we can still see three areas of visible light. On the edges, we can see the slightest bit of bright light. It quickly goes to the middle and then to dark. The reason this light is visible is because the camera is not in a direct straight line with the sun and therefore areas of the 3D object surface can still be viewed. If the sun and the camera were in a direct straight line, a perfect silhouette would occur. This is not to be considered a technically poor photograph. In fact, the silhouette can be a desired effect to make many shots successful. Our final look at the effect of available light is the bright exposure. Let's take a look and see how this happens. Bill serves the ball. Robbie returns. Bill gets it over the net again. Robbie jumps up, going for the slam. Freeze! Here we are with a perfect example of sunlight hitting the ball from the front. The shadow area is now behind the ball where the camera cannot see it. This is different than the silhouette because we cannot see the darker surface while the sun is shining directly at the object. Let's take a closer look. As you can see, the ball is lit all the way around. With the lack of shadow, the image appears flattened. The middle or darker areas are barely visible on the surface of the ball. These areas are just as small as the ones in the silhouette. With the light eliminating the overall shadow areas, the image becomes flattened. When shadows are not visible, the human eye can only perceive distance by relative size comparison of other objects in the frame. An object size cannot be determined if there are no other objects in the shot to compare against. In a bright shot, the image becomes flat and perspective becomes distorted. In most photographs, you want to avoid this effect. Now that we have a general understanding of light, let's move on to some other great techniques of how available light affects our photographs and how we can use simple techniques to control that light.